I let's see. All right. Okay. Well, hey, you guys, guess what? This is take two. <laughs> we are coming back to you guys with Ms. Dorothy Strohall. Hold on right quick. I am going to speak to you guys myself. So, hey, welcome to our Let's Talk discussion panel where we have real conversations with real people giving real solutions. I am your host, Natasha Clark, and I'm so excited that you have decided to join us. Let's see. Hey, if you missed the last two days of our Let's Talk discussions, on Thursday, Dr. Justin Henderson talked to us about how to stay mentally healthy during a crisis. Last night on Friday, Ms. Gail Showalter discussed parenting during a crisis. You guys, they both did a spectacular job. Don't take my word for it. Go back to my business page and watch the replays. Today is our last day. Today, our guest speaker is Ms. Dorothy Strohal. For those of you who are not familiar with her, she is the owner of her studio, Your Makeup Expert, which is a go-to for celebrities as well as elite brides in Houston, Texas. She's had the pleasure of working with people like Dr. Oz, Conan O'Brien, and countless others. After her debut on the Food Network hit show, Worst Cooks in America, season three, she returned home from New York and was hit with the reality of a very dark subject, human trafficking. God instilled in her a drive and a passion for change that helped fuel the start of Beauty Will Rise, a nonprofit organization fighting against human trafficking in Houston. So before we get started and I invite her on, I want to, our topic for today is overcoming hopelessness. Overcoming hopelessness. We are living in a time right now where our nation is in crisis. Uh, the world is in crisis. We're not only in the United States of America dealing with a pandemic that it, we thought it was kind of numbers were coming down for the viruses. Okay. Uh, but now the numbers are starting to go back up. And so we are going to talk to Ms. Dorothy Strohall about how to overcome hopelessness. Ms. Dorothy Strohall, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here and to get to, to share with you and to talk with you. I am, uh, I'm just honored. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I know that hope is a very interesting topic and we don't necessarily have or feel sometimes like we have a lot of hope in our world, in our family circumstances maybe, um, or even personally in our lives, in our jobs or what's going on. So I think the first thing we have to do is really define what I'm talking about or what you're talking about with hope and uh, what hope or hopelessness is or looks like. So didn't you tell me that you looked up the definition of hope? Yes. So you guys, I am a preacher and a teacher by nature. <laughs> so I could not help. <laughs> I could not help to go and check out these uh, definitions. So I looked up the word hopelessness in the freedictionary.com. The word hopelessness means having no hope, of course, despairing having no possibility of being solved or dealt with, where there are situations that have no possibility of being solved or dealt with, impossible. Uh, in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, the word hopelessness means incapable of redemption or improvement. You guys, I wanna preach right there about redemption. So we're talking about how to overcome hopelessness and the definition of hopelessness is incapable of redemption or improvement. But by the time we're done today, we're going to tell you about one who is totally, who totally came to redeem us. Therefore, our hope dwells in him. I also looked up the word hope in dictionary.com. It means the feeling that what is wanted can be had or that events will turn out for the best. Okay, Miss Dorothy, I'm turning it over to you. Can't wait to hear what you have for us. 
Thank you so much. So, you know, earlier today on my timeline, uh, a video came up and it, you know, you know, Facebook likes to bring stuff up from the past. And sometimes that's a good thing. And sometimes that's not. <laughs> today, it was kind of a mixed feeling. Um, it was a video of my mother who has um, passed. And it was from 2012, 2012 girl. Mm. And it was showing my mother learning how to walk again. Um, in 2012, she had a massive stroke that uh, took out the left side, no, the right side of her brain. It affected the left side of her body, some of the cognitive issues. And the doctors left us with zero hope. Wow. And I'm not kidding. They said if she died or if she makes it through, like she's got a 50 50 chance of making it. And if she does, she will have no quality of life and she'll be bedridden. Wow. Wow. And I have a video showing her walking and learning to rewalk. Wow. You know, uh, my mom didn't do anything to deserve that, she didn't bring it on herself. It was a part of a life circumstance that happened to her that she had zero control over. And just like you said, with hopelessness, there was no outlook for redemption from that. They told her there was no coming back from this. Now, coming back looked different than what we thought it would look like. The process in her learning to come back and to uh, learn to walk again was hard. I'm not going to say it wasn't hard, but she had people alongside her that when she didn't have any hope and the doctors didn't have any hope, we hoped for her. Yes. And not only did we hope for her, we prayed for her and through with her. So, you know, there's times in our lives that we have personal tragedies, personal times of hopelessness. Um, and there's times that we're there for people during those times. But until you have come to the end of your rope and you can't do anything else, I don't know that you've really experienced hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Hopelessness really truly means I ain't got nothing left. I ain't got nothing left. As a matter of fact, let me, let me read this. Um, this is an excerpt from my, uh, from my blog from 2017. I was there for my mother during that time where there was no hope and it was hopeless. My sister was there. Our entire family was there and had come together, um, even the grandsons and everything. So it's easy, it's easier, not easy. It's easier to have hope for someone else. I have hope for you. I have hope for her and, and, and come through with that. But when you're the one that is down and out, let me, let me, Add a little, show you a little bit of maybe you thought this and maybe this is um, a thing that has gone through your brain. So I'm going to read this with my fabulous little readers. Yes, they are. I laid in my bed sobbing uncontrollably to the point that I was barely able to stifle back the sound or even breathe. I had wrestled all night long with the thoughts of quitting, quitting everything. I would not just instantly make an emotional decision. No, that's not how I live life now because I've chosen to live life intentionally. But what would that look like? Would it even affect things? And can I really walk away from ministry, from work, from church, from everything that I did? I wanted to hide and become self-involved because, well, it's easier and safer than living outside of myself. Mediocracy was looking more and more appealing. In those early morning hours, as the last tear left my heart, I resigned to walking away. I had chosen to jump off the mountainside and was allowing gravity to pull me back into me. I had chosen to give in to what I can only call spiritual suicide. At that point, you know, I was emotionally drained, physically drained, and I had taken a hit uh, and made a really, um, made several, made a series of not so great choices. And they weren't intentional, even though they may from the outside have looked intentional, the, uh, the, the bad choices or the bad decisions were not intentionally bad. I had weighed them. I thought I was making great decisions, but in the process, I ended up hurting people. 
And as a leader that loves people, as a pastor, as having a pastor's heart, Mm. uh, and let's just be honest, as an Enneagram 8, one of our biggest fears is hurting people. And uh, because we're, we're made as protectors. We're made to protect people, love people, encourage people, fight for people. Um, and if we think that we have hurt someone, it crushes us to the core. Yeah. And for me, this was one of my lowest points. I had given up hope completely as to if I could bring safety to people, if I could love them, you know, if I could bring joy into other people's lives. You know, that's one of the things that, that is a remedy for cultivating hope in your life is being able to bring joy. Um, and you know, joy is Dorothy, I'm it's, a, sorry. it's an emotion. Before you keep going into joy, um, I have to pull something out that you said. When you were talking about the feeling of quitting and want to give up, I felt like the spirit of God rest on me. And so I, whoever this is for, this is what we do understand. This is why we're coming on having these conversations because we're in a time that seems hopeless for people. People have lost their jobs. People yep. have lost family members to the virus. People don't know what tomorrow holds and they are feeling hopeless. And so for anybody under the sound of our voice, if you have the strong feeling of letting go of everything, of letting go of life, Right now, we just want to come into agreement with you that there is still yet more work for you to do. We are praying right now that God will give you the strength to keep going. He will give you the peace that, that surpasses all of your understanding. We declare and decree, we come into agreement that you will not quit and that overwhelming feeling to quit, that it is going to loose you in the name of Jesus. And for those who are wanting to let go because you feel like things will not get better, we declare and decree over you right now that this is not the season for you to let go. And when you do feel like you can't can't hold on anymore. I heard Miss Dorothy say that she, uh, the, the picture, and I saw this picture of the woman at the edge of the mountain. I wish we can show that. She was at the edge of this mountain. Yes that picture and and if you're feeling like you're at the edge of this mountain and you just want to leap out and let go i'll tell you this that when you want to let go that god will grab hold of you that when you let go if you let go with him yes 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 he will be the one to hold you together he will hold you together he will catch you when you fall and so we just want to just before i allow her to start going into joy and we close out i just want to say may the lord our god uh may he give you the strength to keep going may he give you peace in your mind and may the spirit of darkness that's resting upon you may depression that's resting upon you loose you in the name of jesus and may the words that miss miss dorothy speak on today may it bring life to you may it bring light to you and may the lord encounter you and send you a fresh anointing in this season for this moment and for this time in Jesus name. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you are good. That was divinely appointed right at the right time, right at the right place. The one thing I want to add to what you just said is what I did learn through that is when I was letting go of all hope, mm. he was deepening and strengthening my faith. Come on. Because what hope is part of the definition of hope is to place trust into something or someone. And he was saying, you're done placing your trust in other people. You're mm -hmm. done placing your trust in your own wisdom. You're done placing your trust in what you know to do and your, your wise counsel, because I did have wise counsel all around me. So now, um, now that you're finally at the end of your rope, <laughs> no pun intended, yeah. um, why don't you try placing your trust in me? And it's not as though in that particular moment, uh, I did feel his arms of security and love wrap around me with comfort, but he used a person. 
And it wasn't one of the people that were in my core group, my church friends. It was someone that was on the outside of it. And she just happened to send me a text to check in on me to see how I was doing. And that right there, just that one little text, just that one little word of, of just that one little faith-based word was the, the rope that I needed to grab onto right. <laughs> to begin to build hope back. That's right. If I so, can, go ahead. I'm sorry. I want to interject real quick. And so Ms. Dorothy is basically telling us that when we get into those dark moments, we're not going to be able to get out of it alone. God right. will send people to help you walk out the journey, right? We all need somebody. Uh, I tend to call on certain people to pray for me uh, when I feel like I can't, I can't do uh, what needs to be done. I don't have the strength or the energy. Why? Because I'm starting to understand by and by that I am not enough to get things done. You guys, I'm going to hurt my little girl that won't stop calling me. <laughs> but um, so God will send people to walk this out with you. And if it's not personally, he will send the right word through the right preacher right. or the right person to get you what you need. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but I feel the spirit of God. <laughs> this is what we call popcorn conversation. It's not an <laughs> interruption. It's back and forth and it's good stuff. No, you're absolutely right. You know, um, the interesting thing is having, being the kind of person that has a really strong personality who loves to be there for other people. Sometimes we have a really hard time reaching out to other people when we're in need. And yeah. I will tell you this, I didn't want to reach out. I didn't want anybody near me. I didn't want anybody in my space. I was done, done. Yeah. I was done hurting. I was done hurting people. I was done. Um, I was done. Yeah. And I would not have reached out. And it's not that I don't reach out or have an aversion to reaching out, but I was past that point. Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting out of bed. I wasn't showering. <laughs> <laughs> hygiene. And, and for a makeup girl and someone that does what I do, when you stop hygiening, we, we, we got real problem. If you problem. Stop, we got problem. Gotta you go know, talk and the, Justin Henderson. Right, right. <laughs> and, and that's the truth, though. So there is times that, you know, when I talk about a remedy to help building up um, a residual of joy to help keep you in a place of gratitude and build keeping hope in your life. This, this was a low, low spot for me. And I think everybody has at some point in their life hits that low spot and they've got to know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And if you can reach out, you should reach out. And if you can't reach out, that is when you need to call upon the Lord because he will bring someone in and not just someone, but the right someone that you need. Because I would have reached out to one of the people in my little circle that was close. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that it would have been effective for me, but he knew who I needed. Mm -hmm. And that's, he brought the right person at the right time at the need. And, you know, a lot of times we don't necessarily put our faith first forward. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. We, sh we, it's first in our life, but there's people that aren't people of faith. And a lot of what we talk about can be used by them to cultivate joy, to bring hope into their lives. But there does come a time when you got to get beyond you and you need more than what you can do. And you need more than what another person can do. You need God to show up on your behalf. And that's where faith grows and goes deeper. And there will come a time that it'll be beyond you and beyond all of the things around you. And you've got to look and reach into a different place, uh, into a deeper place. That's right. And this is what we're talking about is going into those deeper places and pulling up the things and grasping a hold of the things that we need. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, you know, um, I want to, I'm going to read one more statement or one more thing that I wrote in my blog. And then I want to talk a little bit about, you know, if you're not in that super deep place, if you're just feeling hopeless and overwhelmed, 
how can you keep yourself <laughs> from falling or jumping? I, I didn't even fall off the cliff. I flat out jumped, right. if you want to know the truth. Right. But how do you keep yourself? So maintaining yourself into that. But I want to read this because this truly does sum it up um, for me uh, at the end of it all. Because when you are in a relationship with the Lord, it's not just a relationship. It's a covenant relationship. Right. And covenant relationships aren't broken. Before you, you can't break them. Okay, I'm sorry. Before you read, because we're talking about now faith in our relationship with the Lord. And right. so anybody who is on that is not a believer of, of Jesus Christ, I just want to add this. This is for everyone. We are Christians. This is for everyone. You can pull from this. However, I want you to know that the, the things that we are talking about, the experiences that we have had and how we've overcame hopelessness and different things, it was by the hand. We acknowledge that it was by the hand and at the hand of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're not going to push him unto anyone, but what we will do is share our testimony of how he has brought us through and out some hard situations and we can give Girl. nobody the glory but him so if you have not received jesus christ as your lord and savior i just and I encourage you to have ears to hear, not, uh, uh, non not being judgmental, not going by what your old opinions are about God and the church and church people, but just have cl uh, clear ears and a fresh mind to hear and be open to what God may be speaking to you today. I'm sorry, Ms. Dorothy, go ahead. You are good. And I will tell you, um, if anyone really wants to know some some deeper into this blog, they can find it on my website. Um, the name of this blog, because a lot of people are having issues with church. Um, the, the name of this particular blog post is when church covenants don't cut it. So what tipped me over was me personally having issues in the church and what that looked like. So when you said that, you know, there's the difference between going to church and having a relationship with the Lord. Ooh, don't do and it. so, don't, no, don't go now. <laughs> different day, different day, different time. I'm just saying for those Ooh. that we're talking about, you know, not knowing Christ personally, I'm right. not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about all the messiness you deal with church with the messed up people. Cause I is one, well, you know, you. at church, I'm talking about what he's going to be for you at this time when you are in need and when you're not he's still with you so let me read this you know um it is his covenant that saves us over and over and over my theology on church covenants relationships and commitments were shallow in thinking because they were connected to people when the truth is the covenant christ made with you through his blood is the only one that can never be broken and can always reach you regardless of where you are. You may walk away, but he never will. He will always provide a safe line and draw you back to him. So I'm gonna leave that one alone because I think that stands in of itself. I will say this, if you feel him drawing him, you back to him, yeah. all you have to do is have a conversation with him. If you want to reach out, I would love to hear from you or talk to you. And I'm sure Natasha would. Yes. So I'm going to shift and I want to talk a little bit about maintaining hope in the days that we're in and the times that we're in, uh, because there really is a simple formula. And mm -hmm. I hate to say this, but it is. The formula is simple. Um, Brene Brown talks about it all the time. Love her. And she gives very simple, applicable things. But don't you know, just because something simple doesn't always mean it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty simple. The one thing that really brings hope to the forefront of your life is joy. That's right. And how do you have joy? Okay. So first I want to define joy. Joy is an emotion. Also you feel it. It's an emotion. Um, it's an emotion of delight or happiness. Um, it's an emotion of something that you value greatly. Did you know that was the definition of joy? No. <laughs> something that you greatly value or appreciate. Mm -hmm. So what cultivates joy is gratitude. Mm. 
taking an inventory of what you do have, of where you are, of what um, is going great in your life. I was looking at the synonyms for joy, you know, things that you can replace with it. And you've got to be able to find out what gives you joy. Natasha, what gives you joy? You So what gives me joy is just like you said, just being able to think back to the things that I have gone through and come out of, right? The, the Where I am now is just so amazing when I think back on how things were and what I've gone through right. and how God just, you know, shifted things for me, changed me on the inside out. I get happy thinking about the former things and not just the former things, but where I am now and where I'm going. You know, I'm going to tell you some things. So some of the synonyms for joy is comfort, mm. humor, mm. cheer, pride, having pride in what you do. Wow. Uh, and satisfaction. So when you are trying to like cultivate joy in your life, and maybe you don't have the story like you and I have, maybe it's not a transformation from then to now, maybe you're just starting out. How do you really find joy in simple things? Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Me sitting on my back porch mm -hmm. with a cup of tea in the morning brings me comfort. Yeah. It, I'm satisfied sitting there. So that cultivates like a peace and a joy in me um, that I can carry and, and cultivate and grow in me. Another thing, if you've been watching my stories or my timeline any, you've noticed that I have been um, redoing landscaping in my front yard. Yes. Was that fun? And no, <laughs> that is why people hire it done, but I didn't know that. So, but you know what? I have a sense of satisfaction mm -hmm. that it's done. I have a sense of pride that we did the hard work that we put in the hard hours that I called an expert, my sister, <laughs> my sisters, I actually <laughs> called two, you know, and, but my sister, Kim, she came out and she helped and we got to have fun and talk and interact. And that brought me joy, not the work. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. results from the work and the result from the process and walking through that, that, that instilled joy, a sense of pride in my life that I can draw from mm -hmm. when I don't feel like I'm, I'm enough. When I don't feel like I can do something, I'd be like, mm, I hauled rocks for three days from A to B. <laughs> I know I can do it. I, I got hope. I got, I got hope that, 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 that this hellacious process that I'm going through is going to be worth it. Right. You know, so it's, you know, it's simple things in life right. that you might do every day that you can look into that can cultivate joy. Right. You know, my grace loves to listen to music, you know, take a long hot bath, read a really good book. She'll listen to podcasts. I'm not a big podcaster, but some people are, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to find the things every day applicably in your life that will bring forth comfort. Mm -hmm. will bring forth joy, will bring forth satisfaction mm -hmm. that you can have pride in, that you have accomplished and done so that when you don't have hope or when your hope is fading from everything that's happened around you or that's going on around you, you can tap into that and you can say, you know what, I know I'm feeling like this right now but right. I have been in a hard place or I have felt like I couldn't finish it and do it. Girl, I felt like I couldn't finish that landscaping. I thought it was gonna kill me. It took me like three weeks and I took it in phases, yeah. but I did. I yeah. can do hard things and that was a hard thing. Right. But it so cultivates it cultivate and it makes it to where you can pull it. Right, so we're cultivating joy. Okay, so what else do we have in our last 10 minutes? I don't know what you want. <laughs> so that is, so we, we're going to call, I, when you said, when you talked about cultivating joy, um, it, it stood out to me and it reminded me of what you were just saying. Uh, and what I said earlier, being able to think back on the things that God has already done for you. Think back on, uh, what, what he's already brought you through right? The things he's already done. And when you go back and think about those things, it leaves hope. It encourages you 
for what you're going through now. Can you expound on that before we uh, get ready to get out of here? I can. Um, you know, gratitude is the key for um, cultivating joy in your life. And when I say joy, you know, part of it is what do you want more of in your life that makes you happy, that brings you joy? What do you want less of? You know, if you want less of information about COVID-19, then yeah, get off the internet and have less of that. But what makes you happy and what do you want more of? And having gratitude about those things really starts the ball rolling for cultivating joy. So gratitude plus joy is what grows hope. It's like, it's like what waters hope to grow in your life so that you not only have enough hope for you, but you have enough hope to share with others and you have enough hope to throw a rope out. Because what I say, you know, is at one point in your life or another, because this is the photo that I have on my, uh, on my Facebook or on my blog. At, you see the guy holding the other one from the line uh -huh. at one point or another in your life. You're going to be the one at one end of that rope or the other end of that rope and how strong your covenant or how strong your hope is or how strong your rope is, is really literally going to mean life or death for someone else. Wow. So gratitude plus joy cultivates hope. I love that. I'm going to say that two more times. Gratitude plus joy cultivates hope. Gratitude plus joy cultivates hope. Y'all, that just blessed me. Hey, if you guys can just, if you can post that on your page, share this video. And when you share this video, put that on that post. Gratitude plus joy cultivates hope. And that is what we are hoping that you guys will gain from this today. So mm -hmm. despite what you're going through, Remember to be grateful for what God has already done for you. Be grateful for what you have. Uh, well, you're breathing. We're breathing, right? And, and find joy. Find your joy in what, uh, you, what God has already done. Find joy in what you have. We're breathing. Your family is breathing. You have a, a place uh, to sleep at night, right? And allow gratitude plus joy to cultivate your hope. Miss Dorothy, is there anything else you would like to add before we get ready to close out? I don't think so. I, I, I feel like we've covered it pretty well, but I don't want people to just focus on joy. Yes, I do. But I want them to remember that joy also covers comfort. It also covers pride on what you do. It also brings satisfaction. And so just remember, you may not have this bubbly <laughs> joy thing. <laughs> you know, some of us aren't geared that way. I'm geared that way. But some of us are a little chiller and calmer. So if you have a sense of satisfaction, if you have uh, the ability to, to have humor in certain situations, or you feel a comfort in something, that is joy also. It is a part of joy. So don't, let's not just keep like a streamlined focus on what we think or joy has been framed as. Let's expand that and include a lot of other things in that definition. All right. Thank you so much. So you guys, with one more time, how can we stay connected to you? So you can follow me on Instagram, on Facebook at Dorothy Strohall. Um, I also have um dorothystrohall.com now if you're interested in the makeup portion that is your makeup x i know and we hey we are inclusive we go from the really light to the really warm and the darker skin tones you look good fabulous girl the foundation looks great on you <laughs> uh, <laughs> but if you want to follow us for the makeup portion it's yourmakeupexpert.com and that's on facebook instagram youtube um, on every channel. But if you are looking for some inspiration, some faith based, some empowerment, encouragement, and some hope filled words, you can go over to DorothyStrohall.com where my blog is. And we're, you know, I'll go, we take speaking engagements and things of that nature just so I can love on you guys 
and uh, bring a little happiness and joy to your life. All right. Well, thank you so much. We have enjoyed you. So you guys, thank you for joining us as we wrap up our last uh, Let's Talk uh, speaker for this month. Uh, please, you guys, if you have not liked my page, go and like my page. This will not be the last time we have a Let's Talk discussion panel or Let's Talk speaker. I'm looking forward to it. And so to wrap up this session, here's what God gave me. He said, for believers, hope is not a feeling, but a knowing. Our hope flows from our faith in our God and what we know to be true about his promises to us. That he holds all things in his hands and we make the decision to hold tight to our faith. When we hope, make the decision to hold tight to our faith, he will work all things out for the good of those who are called according to his purpose and those who love us. We'll close with Hebrews 6 and 19. So that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath, in which it is impossible for our God to lie, we who have fled to him for refuge would have strong encouragement and indwelling strength to hold tightly to the hope set before us. This hope, this confident assurance we have as an anchor of our soul. It cannot slip and it cannot break down under whatever pressures bears upon it. A safe and steadfast hope that enters within the veil of the heavenly temple, that most holy place in which the very presence of God dwells. For those who are unbelievers, I just acknowledge to you that if you open your heart and your mind and allow the Holy, Holy Spirit to come in, he will give you the revelation that you need. If you have any questions about whether Jesus Christ and what he has done is real, open up and allow him to give you the revelation that you need. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart, then you will be saved. So I pray that God, that you will have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and that he will be the very hope that you are seeking yes. and searching for. You'll stop looking for it in people as Miss Dorothy Strohal so nice. They will fail you. They will fail you. They're yes. people. And that you will find it in him, that your hope will dwell in him, that your hope will be an anchor in Jesus. So, hey, you guys, Thank you for joining us. It has been my absolute pleasure to host our first Let's, Discuss, Let's Talk discussion panel. And I can't wait to see what God is going to do with it. Thanks for joining. Don't forget to share. And hey, comment, comment, comment. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. See you later.